What is up ladies and gentlemen, Manny here. Welcome back to another DIY episode. Today we're gonna check out how you can easily craft your own wooden climbing holds for your spray wall, system wall, hangboard, whatever you like, whatever you have. Uh, out of very simple materials and very very quickly, okay? We're gonna go through everything really quickly. What we start with is this pole here, okay? Super simple raw material there. This is four centimeters in diameter if I'm not mistaken. Spruce. Spruce is a double-edged sword when it comes to climbing hold creation. Why? It's got advantages and disadvantages. The advantages is it's very light. Yeah? So whatever you mount this on, whether it's your spray wall, your hangboard, it's not gonna make it significantly heavier because the spruce itself is very light. It's a very soft wood, okay? So it's easy to work with this wood. You wanna sand off some stuff of spruce, easy done, quickly done. You wanna cut through this pole, very easily done, okay? By the way, we're gonna create a lot of dirt today because we sanding this stuff off we're gonna cut it through that's why we are on the outdoors we don't want to have that dirt all around in our flat okay so very recommended to actually have an outdoor uh, you know garage uh, workshop as we do it ha have it here with the wonderful caddy bro but anyway so this is the raw material the disadvantages of spruce is actually there's only one big disadvantage and that is yeah, this is just such a soft wood, the same as its advantage, essentially, okay? Because this wood is very, very prone to splitting when you mount it on your wall or your hangboard or whatever you have, okay? So you gotta be really careful to pre-drill all the holes. We're gonna show how that's gonna be done most efficiently. First step is we're gonna transform this huge two meter pole into a comfortable working size, which is one meter which means we're gonna simply cut it through in the middle. We're not gonna cut it any further because we don't want to work every single individual climbing hold separately, which is super annoying because then you have to hold it in your hand and everything pretty quick, okay? Now, as you can see, I already pre-marked with some lines on this pole. We've got one line here, hope you can see that, and one line here on the opposite side. And these lines mark where we're gonna take surface area off, where we're gonna sand this pole down, all right? As you have to realize, if you don't do this, if you just try to screw on the pole like this on a wall, you always gonna have some wiggling, okay? If you at least pull significantly hard on the hold, yeah? Now comes one of the most annoying steps. You gotta take a rasp and your pole and take off significant material off this pole. That's why we need a rasp, okay? Because a rasp is a lot quicker than sandpaper of any size. And only afterwards we're gonna use the sandpaper to do the details, yeah? But the rasp is really what takes off material and this is gonna save you a lot of time. We have two sanded down surface areas. Now I didn't measure anything or stuff, how deep this is now. I only know that one side is a little bit deeper than the other one, which is cool. And uh, now we can proceed to actually already drilling the holes, pre-drilling the holes, which we're gonna later on use for screwing on these holes, all right? So first we need to roughly mark our holes on this pole, okay? So that we actually know where we have to place our drillings. And I'm just simply gonna do that by putting a couple of diagonals on the pole. As you can see here, this is where I'm gonna later cut out my holes probably. I'm gonna make some shorter, some longer. Now that the surfaces are rasped off and the holes are actually drilled, we can finally cut out our holes and then we can do the finish with some sandpaper. And then you're ending up with these cute little, you know, edges, pinches, whatever you really want to use them for. And always the, um, the wider side is the one that's going to go to the wall. And one thing I forgot, because I'm an idiot, is that we need to make little, um, you know, incisions into the holes so that the heads of the screw-ons that we're going to use later on have a chance to actually go into the hole a little bit. As I said, spruce is pretty, pretty soft wood. If we wouldn't do that and we crank down the screws on the wall during those, through those holes, there's a big chance actually of splitting the holes. Yeah? All right, look at those beauties. We're already due to the last and also pretty annoying working step, which is to sand down these edges there especially, because this is what's gonna stick out of the wall and this is what you want to be able to hold without you know ripping your skin open and stuff like that. You know, the, the, the major bigger surface areas are already rounded, which is awesome because this, this was a pole, right? 
but we also want to be able to maybe get a thumb around this stuff or I don't know, yeah? So let's send them down and then we can mount them on the wall. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And because they are so round, because it was a pole, right? You have to hold them kind of actively, you know? The more you can get your weight towards your fingertips, the better. And the last one goes on. Look at those beauties. Looking epic. One thing that I already noticed is that you have to be careful with the bigger pre-drilling for the heads of the screw-ons actually. Because if you get them too deep, then mechanically the hold is not supported ideally as well. So you gotta get them around to two thirds of your total diameter, which is what I have here, four centimeters, okay? What I wanna say is that if you get it too deep, you will have so much leverage on the hold that you can actually move it slightly, okay? And that, that's what you wanna avoid. So don't get too deep on your bigger pre-drills. Little tip here, maybe. Let's do it like that. The wall is set. We also got our first foothold on the kicker down there. That's good for starting. Those holes are pretty hard. <laughs> this one I can tell right away. These holes are pretty tough to hold. I have the feeling that they are also still quite... How should I say? They are still quite smooth, you know? Right out of the factory, so to say. And I still have to break them in a bit. And still, just finding a way to the top is already challenging. Yeah, nice. That feels promising. <laughs> 